Three protocol, right? First, you define variable and assign int uh, seed. Now, we don't have any intention to generate any ne negative number, which is already possible. So, what we'll do is we define a loop to read the switch. Now, the reason we need to do this is because these switches they are not debound switches, so the input will change, will change the direction. So what you need to do this is you know, read one value, wait, read another value, wait, keep reading it so many times, at the end, the value is gonna settle. If you read it fast enough, these values can be different. But you just keep reading it, reading it, in this case, you can see 100 times, you're gonna get the final value, which is the value you should get, okay? Now we have done a lot of delay short, delay long, delay whatever, right? So just put some delay in there maybe 10,000 10, or 1,000, it doesn't really matter. But don't just keep doing this 100 times, it's so fast. So once you finish that, the seed will be captured inside the U32 seed, okay? And then you use the SRAN U32 seed to start the random number generator. So this one, you do it once. Don't do it over and over. The moment you say SRAN with the seed again, you reset the random number generator with the new seed. So you're supposed to do this once only, okay? So now, once you do that, you can use this to generate a number. So SS is my number. So what does the percent seven mean? Modulus seven. So exactly, so modulus seven means you are going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 only. Can you hear me? You get only 0 through 6. What if it was 0 through 9? What number should you use? Modulus 10. That's right, modulus 10. If you want to get all the single digits, modulus 10. So I only want zero and one. What do you do? Modulus five. You want to get zero and one. So you modulus by two. Then you get zero and one only. There's no three and four. Okay? So this is how you control what number you show up. Right. Now for us, we want to make sure that it works for zero through nine. So it's modulus by ten, you're gonna get a number that's randomly generated. Okay. When you toggle the switches, Look at this guy here. When the switch is the bottom location, I think it's a zero. Okay? Up is a one. Don't use zero. If you use zero, it doesn't mean that it, don't use zero. At least use one to one to do it. Okay? So you can try playing with these switches with different patterns. If you use the same seed, it doesn't matter how many times you run your program, you're going to do the same outcome. Understand? So you can fill the screen with one seed, take a picture, use a different seed, take a picture, they should look different. And then when you switch back to the first seed, they, they should give you exactly the same thing back. Okay? So when we test our program, what I'm going to do is in class, I'll give you the configuration for the switches, and then run your program, then we'll look at what you see on the screen. Then everybody should be exactly the same. OK? 
thing, this is how it tests our program. If yours doesn't look exactly the same, that means you make a mistake somewhere. Okay. Yes. Do we have to set up the uh, switches before we program them? No, you don't have to. The reason is this. Because this loop, it's in the beginning of the program. As long as you set up the switches before you run this program, this loop will always happen. Beginning of the program, you're reading from SD card all the stuff you're supposed to read. That will take seconds, <coughs> probably tens of seconds to finish. Okay? So you can put this after you initialize all your images, all your two dimensional arrays. Then you read this. That's okay too. Or you say, I don't want to initialize this and then read, that's fine. But as long as you set it up before you do this loop, you're okay. But remember, do not put two of these in the same forever loop because you just say re reinitialize my random number generator. Give me one number, reinitialize it, give me another number. Then it doesn't really generate anything meaningful. It's just the same number over, over, over again. Understand? Okay. So this is outside the loop, this is inside the loop. Okay, so you get a number, you display. You get a number this way. Put some the delay in between so that you can see that. And then at the same time, you keep track of the locations, of course. When you finish the whole screen, stop. And then we can look at, wow, we get the same number. We should. Right. This yeah. is phase one. This one? This phase one? No, this is not phase one. Okay, our project starts in uh, week seven. This is, assign this is next assignment, which is due next Wednesday. But you get most of the stuff done already. You have all the images written, you have all the functions you've written to initialize from the SD card. Okay, so right now I'm just saying, okay, put this in there, you can see the patterns of what's going on. Okay. So when you develop anything application, for example, a video game, if you have stuff that coming in, uh, you need to have a random number generator to generate some kind of numbers, which, which is a representation of some object in the game. And then when the when the when the game starts rolling, you're just expecting certain stuff, okay? And then <laughs> when you in the game, you're playing it through the game. The number generator just keep generating all these e extra inputs as object in the game. And then the more you do, the more object you're gonna get. But you're gonna get the same type of objects over and over again. It just matter of how often they come up. Very good. This is assignment number 